morning, everybody. How's it going? Good. Very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. It's Friday. Yes. I've had a I had a busy weekend last weekend, but this rest of this week I've been just in my garage making working on San Crow and that's it. And I'm happy. So no, it's not a bad thing, is it? Nope, nope. It's been no. nice. I've been had every day just to be in there. And I get annoyed when you know my wife says to me, Hey, can you return this package? I'm like, I want to go out. I just want to be in here. <laughs> like, that's it. So I how are you guys doing? It's 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 quite worrying. But I reckon we could go into our workspace and model and not look at the clock and then look up and we'd lose six hours. Oh, yeah, easy. <laughs> we wouldn't even know if it was daylight outside. Easy. Like, I, I, I've been up since 3 a.m. working on the sand crawler. And, Jesus, and then I was talking to Jason and I'm like, he said, we got to do a show soon. I'm like, what time is it? He says, it's got like 40 minutes yet. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Five hours went by. <laughs> Four and a half hours went by. I didn't even notice it, you know. And so, has yes, this become a nuisance now? This show because it's taking you away from modeling now. I'm like, damn, I gotta go do that show. <laughs> damn it. Yeah. <laughs> damn that Facebook group. Damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Jason. Hopefully, there he is. How far are you away from completing the sand crawl, then, Chris? I mean, what, what's? Um, what, what do you think, when do you think you'll get it completed? Is, is it is it a name for Wonderfest or? A... It's a name for Wonderfest. Yes. Okay. Um, that's the aim. Painted. I think. I think I'll be able to do it. Uh, I have it mostly done in the inside. I'm doing the inside of the front co cone <clears throat> where the door opens up, and then I and I like the last couple of days I've been paneling the front outside. So once I do that, I can paint the inside, paint the outside, prime the outside, and then mm. attach the front, and then go to town with the kit parts on the top and the back. And then okay. I'm done. Well, until I get the tracks, mm. we're still waiting on like the track like mm -hmm. mounting mechanism yet. So that's that's in the works. You're not you're not seeing this, right? You're not you're not making it radio controlled, right? Like, is it or is that, was that a plan or I can't remember? If well, it, was it wasn't the plan at first, and then I did that concept that at, mm -hmm. and that was so he cool. Likes, he likes driving things around. Huh? Oh, it was great. <laughs> it was awesome. You know, at first I was like, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it road control. And then when I did that, I thought, oh, this would be awesome to do as remote control. It would. But since that's been sitting on my shelf and I haven't touched it, remote control, since, I'm just like, oh, what's the point? It's just going to sit on my shelf anyways. I'm yeah, never it's, like a, it's like a model that you have to light. You never mm -hmm. yeah. light yeah. Yeah. And just I have to, and, and I might do, I might use it like once or twice ever, you know, but there's so much work that I got to do to, to make that happen, you know, sure. so it might not be worth it. So well, the thing with the, the thing with the concept bad is that thing zipped around the sand crawl being much larger and scratch built is, you know, there's a lot of risk to, to bump into something or, I mean, not that you, you can't do it, but it just, I'm a good driver. What worries yeah. me about the sand crawler is the individual tracks on the Sherman, how mm. well they're bonded. Cause you think all that weight and the churning, and then you got to turn it and it's going to twist. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. It's just not worth the time, you know. It, it no. really isn't. I, I just the option would be there. Um, uh, I could eventually do it, you know. I know that the, I know that the plan is to make the tracks so that you can do it, and I assume I could figure out a way to do it. Um, but it's just it's probably just too much time for as little as I'm going to use it. You know, the sound crawler has become almost like the five foot falcon, hasn't it? It's yeah. You can spend a lifetime building that. Yeah, you when can. Do you stop, you just, so many options. Do you, do you detail the interior? Do you make it RC? You light it? Do you find every single kit part? Do you wait until it's completely finished and painted? It's just on and on and on. I haven't seen too RC many. Talking. How amazing would that be? I haven't seen too many people paint the sand crawler. I, I've seen a, a couple mm. that are built, sort of built, almost built. Yours is the farthest built. That I've seen, John. Um, that I have seen. I know there's oh, one Michael, other. Michael Jones has, has did one. He's finished his. Yeah. Is it his, finished? His is, his is not finished. Not finished. Oh, but he's done the interior. He did the interior. We're going to show that today. Um, yeah. But he didn't finish the outside yet. I think oh. him and I might be the first two to finish one of Marvin's 
Um, well, Mar- Marvin will be the last because Marvin's the last. <laughs> to any of his projects. Marvin will be the last to finish Marvin's kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, like I said, in the group that we have, I haven't seen anybody. I mean, you you got the farthest, I think. But then I had to stop because Marvin stopped. <laughs> well, we're gonna start you back up soon. <laughs> and I was like. Uh, you know, I can only go so far on my own. And I think the constant messaging to Marvin about, does this part go here? What's going on here? This doesn't fit. It's got like, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll build something else in the meantime. <laughs> that seems like a recurring theme, John. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, the plan is to have it done by Wonderfest. That's 50 days away. I don't see a reason why I, I won't be able to. So it's, it's, it's going to happen. Um, John, you're you're currently employed full time by the uh, by the by the uh, what's it the, not the rebels the um, tie bombers. Yeah, you got oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah, huh? shipyards. Yeah, the the emperor's got him on payroll now. He just yeah, I'm on number four. Number it's like four. on Andor when they're building the pieces. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just there. You're in the jumpsuit if you're building all the tie bombers. Yeah, yeah, that's me. They look four. amazing, man. I gotta tell you, they look amazing. They do. Four of them in the time it Thank takes you. most people to build one. Well, yeah. uh, well, the one I had help from Marvin on the first one that I've now completely finished. Um, that was my when it, I mean I didn't build that. I'm going to say that everyone built that because I've had so much help. Yeah, from everyone, and I truly appreciate it. Um, so that's why that one was slightly more speedy. The other two were resin ones, so they they go together easy. And then the other one, which is from Jonathan Faber, his armature, that's going to be another scratch built one. So that's taken quite a while. You know, John, I was thinking this morning what you just said about how people have helped you build your tie bombers. I would not have been able to finish, get as far as I have with this sand crawler if it wasn't for a lot of people help. Like, I didn't do this all on my own. You know, like, you know, Marvin's kit, people's IDs. Absolutely. Um, and even just yesterday, like I needed a couple of parts that I wanted inside, right? And I wanted to get the C Lab STL files. Yeah. Okay. And they only I only found CAD files, which I I'm computer illiterate, so I don't know how to transfer STL from CAD, right? So uh Bjorn said he could do it. So yeah. he did a couple of the the C Lab parts for me in STL files. I'm gonna print them up so I can finish the inside. You know, um, I didn't. There were two two parts that I thought would be a little more difficult to cast. So, you know, like I I would I needed his help, and mm. you know, I just recently got to know him, and he's already offering to help with this. And the guys that are met on the Five Foot Falcon. Um, oh. They Facebook seem to group. be the nicest guys around. Yeah. They, if you need something, it comes to you. If, yeah. It's it's just it's constant handouts of helping and <laughs> yeah. just trying to make sure it's none of it is hiding IDs and trying to you know build it before anyone else and this is yep. how it's done. Or it's, yep. it's no shady back background, you know, work. Even, it's everyone helping <clears throat> each other out. So you need this, I'll give it to you. You need that, you know, it's yeah, and I, even, I'm so thankful. Even yesterday, was yesterday or the day before? I'm like John, you got this pic- You got this point uh, piece. Yeah, sends it over to me. Right, like it cost. It was one envelope with one piece in it, and <laughs> it came yeah, three in four days. Yeah, three four days. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, yesterday I asked, "Do you have this one?" I'm like, "Don't send it yet. I'm sure there's going to be ten more I need before the end. Before you know, instead of spending it." Yeah, but like this, piece. you're 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 casting pieces for me now. Yeah, like you're. And another thing, this group, the Nerf Herders group, everyone is just. It's flying, you know. Mm-hmm. Everyone's helping each other out. Everyone's boosting each other's confidence, and that's what we need. And then, yep. um, thank you. To I think that was lost, which is what you know. I mean, we've talked, we've all talked about this for a while. A lot of that helping and sharing parts, and you know, there's there's still some ideas that you can't share, but um, yeah. and and I understand that. But a lot of people are helping each other out in ways that they are able to, you know. Um, yeah. And yeah. which is something that we've really like when Jason and I first gotten into the studio skill com- community, it was uh, like kind of shut down. You know, the yeah. RPF was ghost town and people were showing yeah, things. Think, and I think the big players that left the RPF 
uh, had a knock-on effect, as in not in a not, not in a bad way, but just the fact that it was, as you say, like a ghost town. Mm -hmm. So the the questions to be asked and were there, but the answers weren't. You know, so right. yeah, this group is has really helped us all. Just I love make, it. make models better. I, I love it. I, this workshop Wednesday that uh, it was David Ashby who first thought of it and it was a little slow in the beginning. You know, people are, you know, one or two here or there, but this past weekend there was a ton. There was a whole bunch of people who put up pieces showing their work and it's been incredible. Like I love seeing people building TIE fighters and, and, and welding droids and, and, you know, yeah. people are putting up their five foot Falcon builds and like just everything, you know. I think um, people are popping out from the woodwork that I, I don't know. And mm -hmm. I've never seen it. And they're like, wow, where's this guy been before? Like, it's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, like that ATST that we were all talking yeah. about. Uh, yeah. We'll show that in today's. Um, and I, I, I don't remember. I think it was, I don't remember whose idea this was, but like to, I don't think it was mine, um, but to sh show people's work from the group. And talk about it and highlight it. I don't remember, you know, it, it came. I think up. that was my idea. <laughs> it might have been, yeah. Um, but this is this is really also another thing. Like even yesterday, you know, a lot of people posted stuff, and then I said I put the that we were going to do this show, and I said last minute get your pictures yeah. in, and a bunch of people should put up a bunch of pictures, and I was like, yes, yeah, nice, a lot of content. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of new content that came up that I was like, nice, we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. So um yeah, it's just been it's just been it's been really fun. The the new group has been really fun and really helpful and adds to makes adds to my list of projects daily, you know, like <laughs> it's just things that I look at, I'm like, oh yeah, I want to do that, I want to do that, I want to do that. So yeah, when the mojo is running a bit low as well, and you just see how people are like cracking on and just doing all these awesome builds, you're like, "Yeah, come on, let's, let's start building." And I That's feel like cool. I, I feel like a lot of people are building. Maybe not. Maybe it's just because I'm seeing it, but I feel like people are actually building more because they're in this group and seeing other people's work. Uh, is it my imagination, or or do you see no, more? I think, I, I, yeah. I think it's um, it's triggering people's want to, to build yeah, I think more. The yeah yeah i mean i i feel like it was it was a there you know there were people who always built all the time and you saw it all the time and, and it was great to see but like more people are coming out of the woodwork and trying this at, trying their hands at this you know and 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 actually i haven't seen too many things that i was like well that's okay you know most things have been pretty damn freaking good yeah, really good standard yeah that's you know what we should do we should do that What'd you say, Jason? This has been a lot. There's been a lot of great stuff. Coming yeah. Lately. What'd you say, John? We should, do a, um, we should do a Nerf Herders competition. Yeah, that'd be great. Like what? What kind of competition? Like or, a a group, competition. or just something like? Well, we we're working on that. That's a, that's being shipped to us right now. The well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That particular, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get to but do that one first good. before we jump into another one. <laughs> so I used to be on a website called um, Scale Model Addict, and what yeah. people would do. Would, would donate their models into a pot. So you would have the prize would be everyone's models that they donated. So the winner would end up with a shit ton of models. <laughs> oh, that would be bananas. Man. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Talk about taking the pot, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. But it was, it, back then it was kits like tanks to yeah. be built, not donor kits. But imagine the, uh, Imagine yeah. people donated uh, some cool donor kits. The Sand stash would be, yeah, donor kit, <laughs> huge donor kit pile would be the. We want to send me a C another C lab. I could use two more, you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah but even, if, even if it's like a little bag of parts that are just yeah. original bits, I mean, in in ten people, fifteen people put in that. Oh, that's a huge, that's a huge win. Yeah, and we used to get um, sponsors like um, the air, like the airbrush company and places like that, and they would like they just to get their name on it, they would put in a pot of paints or an airbrush or something like that and yeah it really grew it was quite Such exciting an idea, organizing it as well uh dimitri uh bjorn was bjorn did some work to to sw switch them over to stls and uh 
I, I feel bad asking him for any more. I don't want to, I don't, I hate like make, asking people to do work for me. But if you already have them, Dimitri, I would love to get them from you. So I'm fine. Like there's certain, there's certain builds that I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to use real C lab parts on. And now I'm like getting to the point where I just don't want to use them at all anymore. So I'm okay so with You don't feel bad asking me at five in the morning. So I can't stop yawning. I'm sitting there yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I was up at three in the morning. Um, I'm surprised you were up that early. No, I'm up at three in the morning a lot. Um, it lately, I'm, I'm just dreaming about sand crawlers and Jawas right good now. Good day, fellas. Sorry, I was just <laughs> reading that in my head the way it sounded. Good day. Good day, fellas. Good day, fellas. Lee wrote in. He's not going to be able to join us today. Um, and yeah, we got a couple of people watching today. It's been great. Um, all right. So shall we jump in and take a look? Yeah. That's what we're here for. I'm not here to listen to us talk. Um Let's see here. John, you still look up. like you're in like 1987. <laughs> what, as in, as in my haircut, my body shape, or... <laughs> you know, like the 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 look of the like the hue around you. I don't know. You guys know what this I mean. My, right? This is my brand new webcam. <laughs> is it? <laughs> no. Oh, I was gonna say. Well, then. he says to me yesterday, "I got a new webcam." I'm like, "Oh, great!" I said, "I said let's let's hop on and hook it up and make sure it works." He goes, "Oh yeah, I guess I should do that." <laughs> And then he writes me back later. He's like, oh, it don't come till tomorrow. I'm like, well, how do you not know you don't have it yet? Like, <laughs> yeah, I ordered uh, all those fumes. It's why. Is that paint on your phone or is it? No, this is just a really bad laptop webcam. Uh, okay. I'm trying to clean it. Yeah, get that chicken grease on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the worst when you go to blow your nose and then you're blowing out like, you know, stormy sea yeah. from all the tie bombers. Yeah. Armander, when are we going to get you to build something little, just little something? You will. Uh, okay, cool. Some, I have some time. But, we thought, we thought for sure. Me. We thought for sure that the little Death Star would be right up your alley, It'd be perfect. It's very I simple. Mean, the- I'm going to make p- p- I'm going to make you a pack for when you come over, and it's all in right, a Ziploc bag. With all those parts in, right, yeah, and, and some styrene glue, and I'll ask some questions. Um, all right, dude. Do you have a Do you have a three D print of the skeleton? Yes. Okay. And and you have the template, right? Yes. From Martin. okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. I think what's happening is he's in that he's in that group chat where he's just soaking up all the information, right? And then yeah. one day he's I'm building a five a just here. You can't see it. <laughs> That's the thing. It's there. So one day he's gonna post a picture and it's gonna make us all look like you know amateurs. Yeah. No, I think yeah. you'd be really good with it. You're very meticulous and you're I, I mean, don't, know, looking at I your don't think I should paint. That's the problem. I could probably build, but I certainly couldn't paint. And that's, that's oh, well, I, I haven't painted that star destroyer either. I've just left it in kit parts. Yeah. Mine's in primer. Just leave it. I was gonna no. say leave it primed. Mm-hmm. No, I painted it white. That's right. I did paint it white. I just gotta stain it now. I'm waiting to stain it until I get it. Uh, make a base for it, and then I'll then I'll then I'll get it ready. That was so uh, funny. That was that was the highlight of that celebration. Sitting yes. around, we're a few beers down, sitting around that dinner table, and we all just met up for the first night. And all we're doing is going through kit scans. Mm-hmm. We're, at, we're at celebration. There's so much going on, and we're on our phones going through kit scans, just trying to find <laughs> the right parts. Take your pictures, pressing up against the glass. Our faces are like just trying oh, to yeah. Get pictures. Yeah, I took had, a look. We, we had Lee I Ralph took, on speed dial. <laughs> I, yeah, we were talking to Lee Ralph, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, Lee, what's this? And there were people standing behind us who were not so patient waiting for us to get the fuck out of the way. Like, <laughs> yeah, they want to see like the hilts and the masks. And, yeah. yeah. We, we were covering that glass container. I mean, there was, there was, you couldn't see nothing besides the back of our heads and our asses. So, didn't someone yeah. say that they, they stepped back and they just saw Stephen Lane? From prop store, just looking at us, and just thinking like <laughs> these guys are like hardcore, you know. And they, and they were like, yeah, we, and he, we were like, yeah, we've ID'd it already, or most of it. And he was like, yeah, when we came, when we came back, like three, it was the three four hours later that day. He's like, you did it? Well, like not, we can't take the credit because you know, obviously it took a village. But I was like, yeah, pretty much, it's it's already done. He's like, that's amazing. We couldn't find those rear wheels, could we? No. Eventually, well, I, I was saying I was saying Russian SU hundred wheels all day long. 
Oh, you were adamant that you kept. You nah, did. Get yeah, back to your you, plane you, went, you was adamant about it. He's like, you, it's you and Marvin's called like, it. it. Isn't. He's like, it is. It isn't. It is. Yeah. You did call it right away. You, yeah. you actually did pick that out right away, and then we were all like, "No." Nah. Well, I, I actually pulled out my one hundred and looked through it, and I was looking at the bigger wheels and didn't even see it when you mentioned it as the one hundred. I was like, ah, oh, it's not in here. I closed it back up. We know, were going months through down parts. Was it the top of pepper pot lids? We were like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, remember that? Yeah, is it the salt yeah. and pepper shakers? And yeah. 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 But I, I, I do remember one of the things I do remember is what's his name? Stephen Lang, right? The the prop store guy. Yeah. Marvin was talking to me the night before. He's like, maybe we could talk to Steven and see if he can take it out and let us see it, right? And then Marvin and I were standing there. And we 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 actually mentioned it to him, and his face was just like, "What the fuck are you talking about? This is yeah. <laughs> the insurance of taking something like that." Out. Purposes, we can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't take a couple like ten thousand dollar piece out of the case can and we, let you guys can we borrow play this and take it back to the hotel room and do some <laughs> scans of it. Yeah, he just the look on his face was just like, "You guys are fucking idiots!" Like, yeah. no way I'm gonna do that. No, he hit the nail so. on the head then. And and it didn't even dawn on me either. I was I was ready. I just asked him, and he's like, like I didn't even think about that either. So, well, just I mean, I was opening the case slightly so we could just take some better pictures without the glass. But yeah, yeah. and just grab other things and run too. Mm. Right, in a in a in a in a convention that has thousands of people <laughs> walking by. You know, yeah. anybody could bump it, grab it spit on it whatever you know so yeah <laughs> yeah not steal it you want to spit on it. <laughs> spit on it yeah there, there was something in there that was really off like wasn't there like some some saga uh some seek um sequel stuff in there too mm -hmm. it helps with sequel stuff wasn't it? Something stolen, something stolen wasn't there or... what from the celebration there was something stolen wasn't there i think there was, was... what was that mm. really Mm, I don't remember. Yeah, it was all over the news. Yeah, that's right. It was in the news, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. What was that? Oh, wasn't it like a vintage? It was a, like a Kenner thing or something. It was one. Yeah, I, I think it would have been from Vectis or maybe or maybe it was a maybe it was a vintage figure or something rather than something from Prop Store. Was it Prop Store? I can't remember. No, no it, was, it, was it wasn't Prop Store. It was definitely no. vintage. It was a vintage something Kenner. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well. <laughs> Don't come to my house. I have it. <laughs> All right. Let's start showing some of these people's work. That's why we're here. We are going to... I'm just going in order. I'm not picking any in, in, in particular ones. Um, this is one of the ones that popped up after I said, let's get pictures up. Uh, this is Carter's Y-Wing that he's been working on for a little while now, and it looks Ooh. banging. Looks really good. I like the what what colors are oh John left. Do do you does anybody know what he's painting here? I don't know why wings well enough yet. Oh gosh. It's, um I can't remember. I need I and mean, that's the one I'm doing as well. I need to get back. I have done a smaller one. Lee Ralph would know he's the, the one. Gold five? The, yeah, gold five triangles, isn't it? I know he told us before, I just can't remember. I think it might be flat earth. Um, you might have a clue. Do this the old ILM way by how we look at pictures, but zooming in to the bottles is used, and the first picture might give you a clue. Oh, if you yeah, go back. Yeah, okay. I think the list of colors was mentioned in that. There you post go. That he was using. There you go to the right. Oh, no, that, looks, that looks to. Um, that. Uh, I can't read. Oh, it. Grime, that looks like. Yeah, it looks like Grime. I think he's, in the comments he's that listening. mentioned which paints he was using, the colors. I think he's listening. I know he told us. Uh, nope. He had in to make comments? some custom ones. Comments. I seem to remember there was something about the paint being used. Uh, looking good, though. It's not easy to get the hues right with the lack of really good ref. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there you go. Here's the colors. There you go. Reefer White, Dark Lark. Reefer yellow, light gray, mud, foundation, and earth. Okay. I know he told us that, guys. 
Yeah, that's really yet. nice. What um, did, what model is it? Is it was it a um, is it one that he's been scratch building himself? Oh yeah, he's been scratch building this. Yeah. Oh sweet. Yeah. Yeah, he's been scratch building for showing him for like for a little while. Love seeing it too. Mm. I feel like sometimes I put up too much pictures of the sand crawler. Um, I mean, it's what I'm working on all the time, but like I put it up so just to keep some some um content coming, you know, people yeah. talking and stuff like that. So we never um, tire of seeing your sand crawler, mate. Well, I mean, like, like it has taken me two days to do to draw up the panels and then glue them on on one one side one facet so it's like you know how much can i show of that but um i do really like these colors oh, i it's, it's lovely i actually prefer these colors to like go to gold leader um oh the gold leader is the worst one in my opinion yeah <laughs> this is the this is you think this is triangles yeah okay this is nice carter can't wait to see it finish brother Doing a fantastic job. Absolutely. Looks amazing. Yep. It really does. Yeah, you don't see too many in this livery, do you? So it's kind of nice to no. see. No. Most people do gold leader. Mm -hmm. I like that color scheme. Yeah. Yellow yeah. and the earth and the it's mud. Really nice. yeah, it is. I would honestly like to have a couple different Y Wings on one shelf. Can't well. They are. They are proper space hoggers. Oh, they are. They're power, they're really big and and take up a lot of space. You just have to sell some stuff to make room. I think. So, thanks, Carter. I guess you Love could it. do it, but in a smaller scale, right? I mean, that's the only thing, though. It wouldn't be studio scale if you if you wanted uh, to. Screw do. that. Go big or go home, brother. <laughs> I always. I'm. I'm big. I like well, the big. Jedi ones. A proper size at the what? One forty eight, the one seventy two, or something. Bandai's one seventy two, and then. So this is Stefan. This isn't Stefan's. This is he always puts um cool reference pictures up. I love seeing the reference pictures he puts up for his, you know, and then he starts showing his. Um he's really decking the sucker out. Yeah, that's that's the effort is should be uh, rewarded there. It's really good. Yeah. Especially these little tiny figures in these little in windows. Yep, it's brilliant. It's really cool. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's I right. mean, obviously it's a three D print, but like, dang. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look how small it is. What's it on? Yeah. It's just on a, I don't know, styrene piece of styrene. Oh, that's the light for the light. Okay. This has been coming along nicely. Hmm. Really nice. I'm going to be doing one of these eventually. Somebody sent me a kit to do. So I will be going back to these pictures to get some ideas. Well, you're doing the actual yeah. the actual size? No, no, no. Just oh, the JPG okay. cast. Resin I was cast. Say, that's, 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 that's years in the making. No. I don't think I, that's something I would. I've told John before. I will never do that. That I could tell you. <laughs> never gonna it's too, happen it's too randomized um <clears throat> I, I mean this is something that you really have to dedicate a lot of time oh, yeah. resources to. it can't just be like a side build or one of those pieces on the bench yeah none of that but the kit parts alone are crazy like look at these look at i mean just layers and layers of just random kit parts all over the place it's like doing a it's like doing a starter sure you mm. said never to a five foot falcon, but now you're. No, I never said never to that. That I I have <laughs> actually toyed with a couple times. Okay. But I just thought, uh, you know what? It's probably better that I don't. The good, um, the good thing about the sorry, Chris. The good thing about the yeah. NetBee is that the kits, kit parts on it, uh, for the most part, are quite big. Oh, are they? Well, I mean, I'm talking there's, about... a lot, there's a lot of ship hulls and stuff. Um, yeah. But I'm you talking know, about like all this little individual stuff in here. Like, it's not that little, really. Can you think how no? big it is? Well, sure. I mean, I think you say that like it's probably like 25, 30 inches wide. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, like, unlike the Falcon, where you have like little teeny tiny, you know, pieces this big on a PCA big, 
I think it's a little more safe to say that you're not going to be dropping a ton of pieces and losing a ton of pieces. It's only because a lot of miniature bits on here. I mean, I'm sure there's some here and there, but you are primarily working with larger, larger skill bits. Yeah, Plus, I mean, this, this is like, this is a weird thing. This is like a background ship in a mm -hmm. huge scale. It's parts mm -hmm. laid on parts. Whereas like the Falcon has all the pits in it and stuff, doesn't it? Which yeah, and the and the rear deck engine detail is just mind blowing. And the kit parts on the Falcon are older, so yeah. some of them are a lot more expensive, right? And really, really obscure. Yes, yes. All the all the Star Wars ones are the New Hope ones are a little, always a little more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Great job, Stephen. And Stewart, speaking of oh, five foot falcons. Yeah, speaking of five foot falcons. Oh, I I I gotta tell you, when I decided that I was doing this, I went and I went back into Stewart's Facebook page and just went back and looked at all of his pictures and then looked at all the videos that he did. His work is so nice. Like his building kit parts and stuff like that and layout and all that other stuff is so clean and just precise. His videos are so watchable as well, aren't they? They're, they're, yeah. You know, I've, I've watched this, a few of them and uh, they're great to watch. I don't know which is sexier, uh, him or the Falcon. <laughs> you know? So, it's his accent. It's his accent, yeah. So, um, this, like, he's he put a couple of pits up on the Falcon group. And then this is the first time I think he's posted something, some of these pieces in, in our group. Um, and I welcome it all. Welcome it all. Like, just keep, just keep bringing them on. Mm. Keep showing them. We keep losing Jason and John. I'm, no, I'm here. Yeah. It's just a child runs into the room. Well, I, yeah. You, yeah. You told me your kids would be coming in. John, oh, Jason, God. where are you going? You had me up at the crack of dawn, man. I'm seeing you picking your nose or what? Like, <laughs> no, we woke me up at five. I'm yawning away. I didn't wake you up. I texted you, but you answered. Um, so, uh, Stuart, if you're gonna if you're gonna chuck those Sherman parts you didn't use in the bin, put them in my pile, please. <laughs> yes, yes. So, add them to the winner's pot. What which Sherman is this? Is this the this isn't the band? This isn't the band. This is too small for Bandai. Right, this is Fujimi, I think, isn't it? Fujimi or Nitto, I don't know. Okay. Um, I think that's brand, that's an um, expensive brand. <laughs> yeah, expensive brand. Is that is right? There's a lot of really obscure um, model kits that I had never even heard of before on this thing. You know, just you know what gets me is the planes because I know nearly every tank i know cars i know starting to get to know ships planes i have no idea yeah me neither yes do is unless Stu it's is, a junkers or a bf109 or a spitfire this is a uh, hasagawa sherman and they're ah, he says, dimitri says they're cheap oh okay cool cool i have come to the conclusion that i'm going to have to use cast parts and even 3d printed parts for the five foot falcon like i don't want i don't want a 3d printed like block of of a pit or the back i want like individual parts that i can glue on i i i broke the bank when i when i did my sand crawler and the slave one and the and the um the silo those will be the only three i think that'll be exclusively kit parts um, i'm just the same chris yeah the yeah. sand crawler has killed me uh yeah. having that 95 percent styrene and then when yep. you hit it with primer and paint it, it looks no the same. Know. <laughs> it, looks <the> same. <laughs> it looks the same it looks the same but yeah Stu, please keep showing we love i love seeing yeah. your five foot falcon progress just please I, I i went back and watched all the videos every one of them here we go. This Love is that. Roberto. He's kind of a newcomer to our group, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. Look at that. And that's, 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 that's that is magnificent. That is magnificent. That's crazy good. And as I was, I was looking at the pictures I was putting out the curse earlier, I was like, I like the homage where he took a lot of the P-51 
pieces from both the regular walkers, the mm -hmm. chicken walker and the four-legged walker, and added the bond hair. Mm -hmm. I like the rear more than the front. Don't we? Yeah, usually? it's very, very well detailed. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? The rear. <laughs> Sometimes you can get by with just the rear. If you, yeah. you know. I just realized as accurate as that side piece is, if you look at it from the same, it looks like it's smiling at you. It does. Yeah, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? That, that was bottom bit. This is fantastic. Yeah, and so not I don't want to say simplistic. Okay. It's like I was I forget. I think I was telling you, Jason, this morning. The regular ad at ATST has a collage of just a bunch of parts that are all over the place and not like it's just a mess. Yeah, this parts. is very form, form So that's fact, basically yeah. what he's building, right? That's the joke yeah. I was yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's at he there's a picture of it he has. Oh, is he got here. It? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's spot a perfect on. blend of mediums as well. It's it's original kit parts, 3D printing, cool. a styrene scratch building. Yeah. He even used I think he used MDF on the head. Oh, okay, cool. That's what I think that I think I, if you look closely you can see that it's a little brown. Like I think that's MDF. Oh laser cut MDF. Oh wow. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. He's got the universal greebly there. Right there. Yeah. Dude, get those sell us the files. <laughs> <laughs> I would I I would love to have this to display with my two other ATSCs. This is fantastic. Like I think this is this looks is this this looks three D printed, right? I think the body. I think the, the yeah. I think the body and the legs are three D printed. Okay. But it's like it's it's just very clean. Yeah. Like a concept piece should be, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Excellent. Yeah, I really like that. I think uh, Robin Moore did one. Okay. A few years back, that was nice as well. This is fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Roberto. Keep sending pictures. You got uh, a lot of feedback on that too. Sophie did some three D prints of. Uh, is this the B wing, right? Or... No, this is the Nando. Uh, no, Nando. <laughs> Mando N one. Okay. From Ravel. Okay. Which I've got in the stash, and I've seen built at a model show, and it's an impressive size. It's nice. This 3D um, print? No, they're just no. It's a Ravel kit, but she's added the 3D printed parts. Uh, I see. She's okay. designed herself, and I think she's selling the set for eighty pounds. Okay. And Sophie yeah. does amazing work. A lot of a lot of if any if I need any 3D work, it comes from her. That looks good. She designed that. Uh, I believe so. Very impressive. Most impressive. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Brett. He's also oh, been a, 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 a godsend when it came to building this this tie bomber because. Uh, yeah. God, Big shout out to Brett for those cast parts and for giving. That's all motivation to build bombers. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty much the catalyst that sent you guys all scurrying to build these things. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about doing one for a long time. Um, just never. I mean, we've actually been waiting for um, the armature. And then yeah. Faber, Steve, uh, Jonathan, actually. Um, yeah, he came through. He came perfectly. through. And then even on these little end ring pieces. Right, because we were all kind of going over like, what's the three three step, and then Jonathan kind of saved the day there. Yeah, yeah, that's your pop. Coming along beautifully, Brett. I have been very good at not sidetracking and starting to do this while all you guys are showing pictures in the group. <laughs> all these are doing this, and I'm just, I'm like, come on, I want to do it too, but yeah, with. But with Marvin as well building along with us, it's... yeah, yeah, it was nice. It was nice that Marvin built along too. Because I gotta say, if I was doing this strictly alone, I, I think it would have been a lot more challenging. So having John, like you post, and then having Marvin post, and being able to ask questions, because as I as I said, very deceiving, right? You you 
part, there's two versions of parts maps that are very detailed, very laid out, uh, very well organized, everything that you need. But man, this thing is deceiving. Yeah, and it's such a lovely size when it's built as well. For a studio scale model, it's it's literally that. Oh yeah, it's it's it's, it's fantastic. Not too not too big, not too small, but no. yeah, for something that seems like a nice little pretty package, I, I mean, they they did some really interesting things with this. And if you build it from scratch, you are sixteen hundred dollars pounds in in debt straight away. If you're trying to buy yeah. every Leo, oh, yeah. easy. That's what. Remember, we were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. I said, "How is anybody selling these for X amount of dollars? Where it could parts alone them into it for over a grand?" Mm. Shit. Yeah, take Sarah or something. Um. All right, let's move along. And Dimitri. Yeah, look at that, lovely. Yes. Mm. That's such clean work. Wow. Yes. That's nice. That is beautiful. And. Let's just get our heads around the angle, the curvature. It's that none of that is easy. Yeah, because no. it's not only curving this way, but it's curving unevenly this way too. You, you've got yeah, you've got a you've got a kind of shape that's curved and right angle, and still keep those lines straight with the nut with the notches. Sorry, I have to break my boss. I know he's got. I I um Demetrius on here talking i don't know if he can tell us i think that's um off a design off his designed um 3d hull i don't know it looks like it but that's a great way of doing it because you you, you lose all the 3d with styrene plating and kit original yeah. kit points it's just again a lovely way to introduce 3d printing into modeling is yeah without a, i agree john without overdoing it i, I think yes. this is the perfect way of using it as a resource yeah yeah um i was the last couple of days i've been pulling my hair out trying to get the paneling done for the sand crawler um and then john you kindly reminded me oh yeah falcon's gonna be real easy to do paneling on <laughs> figuring out all the measurements and stuff i'm like shit yeah it's gonna be difficult it'll be a mind-blowing to do this dimitri answered uh, yes, uh, 3D printed for the main hall and then primed and a lot of sanding. Yeah. So you use the filament uh, 3D printer? No, obviously. That's, you can't, that'd be too big for the resin, the liquid resin one. It's more efficient to get the domes from Stu, I think. Yeah. Uh, I well, you've got them. You've got them, haven't you, Chris? I do. <laughs> I put them on the coffee table and I just looked at the sheer size of that beauty. And I was like, oh my goodness. I got to give her to some kids to make some space. <laughs> I really do. I got to get rid of a couple. Um, yeah. yeah, FDM. Okay, I keep getting it mixed up. But what, what is FDM and F, what's, the, what's the liquid stuff? F, FL, F, FLR? No, all right. I'm sure somebody will tell us. But yeah, he uh, he was showing his his method for wrapping styrene around a, a curved object. Right. Okay. Cool. That works for me. Yeah. SLA. Thank you, Dimitri. I gotta be honest. I love my little three D prints that I make of little kit parts and little figures and stuff. I get excited when I like. I just I just did the I just built uh built a. Uh, I printed up a a probe droid to use as a crane inside the sand crawler. Um, <laughs> he's gonna pinch some 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 scrap up, yeah. and I don't know. I don't know why I like it so much. I just I like the, what I like about it is is okay, John. I, I I need a kit part. Okay, I'll send it to you. It takes a week. To, it'll take a week to get to me, right? Yeah. A three D printed part. I'm like, I need a kit. I need that kit part. An hour, I have it printed. You know what I mean? It's right yeah. there in my hand, and I don't have to wait a week and put time off to do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's a very extremely helpful tool. This is awesome. Can and you, and let's just work out the size of this, right? You know, that's yes. You, you know how small it is because the front of that is on your 
Macedonian. Yeah, it's, it's like, like this big. Tiny. It's like this big. I mean, yeah. the, the five moles one was 172nd, and I almost went blind doing the chipping on that one. And this is even smaller than that. So, yeah, you did a fantastic job on the paint job. Yeah. It's just crazy how all these old kits can, with the right paint job can still look really, really impressive. Definitely. You, you yeah. can shine shit, I guess. Right? <laughs> Looks great, John. I think Lee, uh, Ralph was saying the actual skirt to this is more accurate than the in the shape wise than the five old one. But yeah, not an easy thing to do, not on that scale anyway. Great job. Uh, yeah. Okay. Looks great. Thanks for showing us, John. I did remember his name's John. This is the first time I remember. <laughs> and uh, this is one of those kits that, that I've never heard of before. Um, like Brett is building a five foot Falcon. This is one of them on the five foot Falcon, I guess. Okay. Um, I looked it up. I think it's like $80. I thought I saw. Is it? Is it? Is it a, um, it's not a wooden one, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's like it's like oh, the um, the P thirty eight that's on the Dornian. Has it got back, it? Form, back form parts in it, or is it all just a wooden? I don't know. It says simple screwdriver assembly. Every time I see a raw eye panic, that I need that. I need a kit. Yeah. <coughs> it's, What's it's the name of this? One. This is Aurora Fucker. D seven Fucker. What a fucker. Meet the fuckers. Yeah, there's a wankle engine and a fucker on the on the on the falcon. <laughs> I'm sure it's this <laughs> little tiny. <laughs> yeah. A wanker, that is true. Yes. A wanker and a fucker. <laughs> it's probably just a tiny little half inch piece that you need too. It's not like a big like sidewall. Oh yeah, anything. it'll be pointless. Yeah. It'll be like the prop or something at the front. Yeah. A little little wrench or something. Yeah. Uh, it's a little piece you need for the engine deck. Oh, okay. I'm getting all these messages. My boss is sending me. <laughs> He's watching. Sorry. Yeah. I what are you doing? Do something. I may have to do something. Stop mm -hmm. sending me messages, people. <laughs> 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 it shows up on the on the screen. <laughs> All right. This thing, uh, I really like this. I've been I've been watching this. This is great. Oh, superb. Love it. Yeah. DS2. Yeah. Looks good. Not easy. Not easy no. at all. Gosh. I wouldn't even That's try. That's really that intricate work. It really is, right? We we take for granted. We can look at it and ooh and ah about it, but you can only imagine, like you said, what a nightmare mm. this is. But at the end of the day, what a payoff, huh? Yeah. But and he I was going to stop. Quite, quite therapeutic. Not for me. When I'm in a bad <laughs> mood, I cannot work on my models. No matter what I, I... You would think it would be like, okay, take my mind off of stuff. When I'm in a bad mood, no, I can't touch my models. I, I can't think straight. If yeah, pieces if, get, yeah, I'm the same. If I've got something going on at work or family life issues or anything like ooh. that, I, I can't concentrate. Yeah. There are... Dimitri says there are two... Uh, let's see. The Aurora is not a balsa plastic kit like the P31. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. There are two Fockers. Two Aurora Fokker kits. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's my new favorite. Yeah, keep showing us, Chris. This is turning out beautiful. I'm glad you didn't stop on it. Um, he was going to yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah. He decided to I know. To keep we were going. both like, what is it, crazy? Remember yeah. He was going to stop. Like, no. Yeah. Jonathan's uh, scribing, uh, yeah, beautiful keep, scribe job there. No, keep going past that. Keep going past yeah, that. It's not bad. <laughs> I don't oh, think this is that bad. I don't think no, this is that bad. I don't think it's honest. bad at all. I hate scribing, man. It's just don't oh, zoom in. What are you doing? <laughs> Get away from that. <laughs> Come on, I want to see. <laughs> we like to show imperfections on the, in this group. There, everything's perfect. Yeah, 
Those with the we broken are. scriber as well. So we all How'd make mess up. How did you do the circular ones? Uh, they're on a mill. My machinist oh. did them. Okay. Dimitri, you're just killing me, dude. The one you need is obviously expensive and rare, of course. Yeah, Dimitri, you're 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 being the the bringer of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Obviously, it's always the most expensive, yeah, the most so rare. Annoying. Okay, this is his. This is uh, John's um, base for the acrylic base. Pain in the arse. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if you know this, John, but if you sand it pretty smooth and then you take a blowtorch and go over the edge, it gives you a nice flash, smooth finish on the edge of, of acrylic. I've done that multiple times. Take a real quick with a blowtorch and just go zip right across it. It'll give you a nice, nice, beautiful finish. But you have to sand it, get nice and smooth. You already, you may already know that. So, oh, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Gentle mate, uh, two thousand dollar, oh, two thousand dollar Porsche kit. Yeah, yep, that's an expensive one on there. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, let's get back. That's my beached whale. Okay. So this what is. These? What's that? I couldn't tell what these were. No, I couldn't tell what they were either. Uh, they're they're off, obviously. Um, I think they're off the tank, the AMT tank. From okay. The, the um, which is in the Gungan scene, you know. Um, oh, okay. Oh, the trait. Yeah, Gary's. Um, I, I thought he was doing the. I don't know if he's filling. I don't know if he's filling panel lines there, and making it smooth. I'm not sure. I thought he was doing that bounty hunter ship. This is yeah. He's using parts from that to make this bounty hunter ship. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. No, I see. Are they Tyrrell wheels there? They look look like one twentieth. They look like yeah, one twentieth. Yeah. Well. Okay, how wide is those deck boards? What's it on? Like, is that a patio deck? Picnic, picnic table, I think. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure, but anything that Gary builds like this usually ends up phenomenal. So. Yeah, he does amazing work. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Yeah. And he owns a hobby shop, so... Yeah. <laughs> He's got um so Jason's been working on the the transport and um in hit one of his posts he says <coughs> you need seven Thors, right? Oh. And these <laughs> they they're they're seats with cockpits. So uh I don't know what these are. Um but he's gathering a bunch of parts for this um this this transport. Which I'm very much looking forward to. Well, maybe we have some luck in the fact that we're building bombers at the moment and their Empire Strikes Back era that's, kits. That we, that's what I was thinking. We, I heard you have yeah. a lot of those kits having to buy so many. Conservers. I wonder what this is from. <clears throat> <clears throat> that is something I'm eagerly looking forward to. Oh, Anzio Annie. I yeah, still that's, don't know that's, what that is. That's a that's a Leo. Oh, uh, okay. The Leo the Leo was called uh, Thor, Anjo, and Annie, and then the okay. Lord of Cold was involved in that somewhere. I think it's to do with what I think the Thor and the Carl are the same. I don't know. They're all like they're all similar. Yeah, the Thor and the Mars of Carl are, are are the same kit, right? I believe so. I think it's yeah, the track. I think it's the um the one that has a, the the track the railroad the railroad tracks on it. Yeah. We used to, on the Chris, crew. Chris, remember when we used to do when we started these shows on the Rogue One Six channel? There used to be like a World War Two buff that would sometimes watch, and if we didn't know something, he'd be like, "Oh, this is this plane. This is this tank. Who who was yeah, that?" Yeah, I don't remember who that was. Oh man, he used to pop up random and just be like, "This is this piece. This is this piece." And we would ask like, "You do models?" Like, "No, I'm a World War Two buff," and he like knew all the pieces. That's lovely, isn't it? It is lovely. Mm. Again, it's just kit pieces put together, but in a way that looks so functional. 
Isn't it so weird how like it's so aesthetically appealing, even the different colors and plastic and yeah, I mean you can tell. I mean the green is an it's an M one eighty or something or something, and then the blue is from the probably like a plane, like an FX plane because of the blue. And these are from the M sixty, I think. Right. That they're on the center crawler on the back. That's and then the you've way. got um, F one above that curved silver part, F one part. Is it crocodile or here? No, that's F one. That's Tyrrell, I think. Or... Okay, I thought. Well, he did somebody. I I thought oh. in here that um somebody said that it was one of the parts was a crocodile oh and yeah what is the piece at the top of the me 109 oh shoot my boss is calling me <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have to let you guys talk about something for a little bit <laughs> damn it yeah no worries wrong timing yeah so this is this is gonna is it, every time i see one of these posts it's scary because i'm thinking oh god i've got this ahead of me when really i should be excited about building a fiver falcon but it's just mm. and everyone that's building the fiver falcon seems to be such good modelers their, their ability is is fantastic. it the only thing they're working on though because i mean on i stewart it seems to be the only thing that he's working on the five foot falcon it's like that's it that's the only thing whereas you know is it is it possible to work on a five foot falcon and lots of other projects at the same time yeah i think you're right because the mistake i made was was drifting away from the sand corner i could have just stuck with that but then we don't know what all the parts were and then mm. things are still being discovered now and then you get sidetracked and these things just start collecting dust but mm. i think you're right Bermuda, the, the people that are doing the five foot falcons at the moment are really storming through them and i mean no distractions right it's just no that's it. that's yeah it also and john you know this it also takes a lot of mental resource right so mm -hmm. as someone like yourself who sometimes will step away from a project when you're in the zone you're you're in a, you're in the zone and you're able to like stay on top of things you're you're in that you're keep keeping yourself in that sort of falcon or sand call ecosphere when you step yeah. away from it for a little bit it's kind of like it's not like riding a bike when you go it, the building is, but the parts and the IDs, you're remembering everything. You kind of have to like refresh your memory and like, oh yeah, I need this again. Oh yeah, I got to get a couple more of these kits. So like when you're going, it's great to just stay that path, right? Especially on a larger project. I think smaller projects you can kind of bounce around, but mm. yeah, something like the Falcon, I feel like it takes a lot of mental yeah, and, resources. And I, I feel like I'm missing out as well because all this is happening when I haven't got mine and I'm not doing mine. And yeah. I'm having, and am I get, I'm, have I missed the boat with all this? Because everyone's building together and they're doing so well together. And I'm like, ah, and that's what's most helpful. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I've got to shoot as well, guys, for a minute. So, <laughs> so we're dropping like flies, but I'll be, I'll be no, back. No worries. I, I, I got limited time too, but no, okay. me, me and Parm can hang out and talk shop. Sure. So, yeah, I, I think with the larger projects, even the sand crawler, right? It's one of those things where, um, yeah, it, it takes a lot of mental resource and it, it takes a lot of time and due diligence. And even if things are finally mapped out and, and well detailed, you, you you have so many subsections that you're working on. Um, and I kind of equivocate that to like working on smaller projects. If you have like two or three ships, it's like working on a partition of, of the Falcon, right? Working yeah. That, I was going to say, you break up the project. It's a big project, but if you break it up into small chunks, it becomes more manageable. So you say, well, you know, you set yourself a goal and say, I'm going to finish this part by this time frame and then move on to the next bit um, yeah but it, yeah it, otherwise it'll lose momentum i guess because you're just overwhelmed by the scale of what you have to do yeah and if you start focusing if like you said if you go outside of any one section mm -hmm. you start focusing on this piece of that piece it's also hard to lose track of what pieces you need to acquire what kit you need to get what you're looking for what you're after but then you know there's always these variables right something comes up somebody has some, some pieces available so that pops up on ebay that you've been looking for and then you start drifting over to that other section but it does believe it or not it does get easier than you would think to kind of drift away from a project and then sort of i don't say forget about it but when you return to it it seems that much more overwhelming um is it easier for something like this to try and get all the parts you need first so you know get I mean, everything you need first and then you know whereas if you're if you're trying to do it piecemeal then it, it becomes a little bit more challenging and you might then end up with a huge gap where you're trying to acquire a particular piece and it might take months before you if you're able to locate that and then you've almost lost the energy and the drive to kind of get back to it i guess so you know that that's the 
that's like the burning question, right? That's the mm. perfect way of putting it. So yeah, there in a perfect world, it would be amazing if you were able to acquire everything needed up front. Yeah. You know, so I, someone like John, that would be a godsend because he loves to get through and get to the paint. So if he didn't have to stop what he was doing and get that one little piece there, one little piece there, he'd be zooming through so smooth, right? Mm -hmm. um, everybody works differently, but I think ideally that would be amazing if, if you could do that. But I just think with some of these older, rarer kits, it's almost impossible, right? Um, mm -hmm. But it, it does, you're right, there's sometimes where you're getting into sections that, you know, well laid out, well built, and then you have a little piece that you could add here, a little piece that you could add there, and it does complicate things. It, it does kind of put a halt when you need that one little piece because one, you don't want to move on and then forget about it and then realize after it's built or painted that you're missing those one or two small pieces. Sure. But um, yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's, it's really tricky. The larger, larger projects like that. Turn off that mute too. Sorry guys. I thought I was going to have to go up to New York city today. No, so, oh, no disaster averted. Um, okay. So this, this is Brett. Oh, this is, is this Brett? Is this the one who's also doing the no, five foot talking? Oh, um, I'm not sure. This is the okay. NPC. Yeah, the it's NPC. And he's um, got rid of all the raised panel lines. They were raised? Is, yeah, all of the old NPC models, like the Slave One, A Wing, I think even, no, maybe the X Wing wasn't, I can't remember. But instead of having panel lines engraved, they were raised. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So if you wanted to make a good job of these, you'd have to sand the whole thing smooth and engrave it all again with the describing the panel lines. Gotta love some scribing. Scribing's yeah. like uh you know you get in trouble in school and you have to write the same thing over and over again on the chalkboard. I feel like scribing's like that kind of punishment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess with something this small, you wouldn't want to cut into the plastic and make it thinner that would bend or break or something so that they raised them instead it was just a, i think it was it was cheaper process probably all the old um fx kits are all raised panel lines or not all of them but i think the older kits they would instead of you know it's weird they instead of making a panel line they would make a raised line you do you put your finger over it and it would be you'd feel it you know it's weird yeah uh dimitri said that that was the easiest pit so, <laughs> i believe yeah, i believe it i'm actually looking forward to making those pits i really am i, I i'm i'm trying to hold off because i have two other projects i want to do before them before that and if i start building these this thing i'm gonna i'm gonna want to do more so yeah i need to finish yeah. sending my parts over to Stuart so he can finish my pits because the way he's building it for me they need to be done first. <laughs> yeah. So Todd has a what is this? Uh, what is this? there's a pyro, but did he say what cardboard being stripped down? Is it a cap? Yeah, is it kept yeah, cardboard? Like, yeah. Pretty good job of stripping it. Yeah, yeah. What did he? What did he use? Is that um, gearbox fluid? <laughs> Break I'm this. Sure I'm sure you didn't use acetone. Cause I would have ripped all that, that resin um, bases, yeah. yeah. Surprisingly, I used that acetone. Um, uh, Randy Cooper told me to to get paint off of off of one of his sand crawlers with acetone. It barely, it didn't do any damage to the resin whatsoever. But right. then I tried it on a nice and slave one, and it started eating away some of the some of the Ugh. some of the details. I was like, no. Do you know in uh, in Aliens when uh, one sec? <laughs> <laughs> so the Captain Cardboard, I, I it's a it's a pyro one, and for some reason I not a huge fan of pyros. Uh, I like the hero ones because they're thicker. Mm. You know they got more girth to them. Um, but hero ones are becoming very hard to come across if you're. Yes. Captain Carbor ones are pretty easy to find. Um, what are the Salzo ones based on? The Salzo ones were effectively a next generation of these, weren't they? If I remember correctly. No, Salzos were, were hero ones. Oh, the hero. Um, okay. Yeah, a different beast altogether. I, I actually oh. built two of these at one time, so I can tell you there's a pretty noticeable difference in the size of them. Like, 
in the thickness of the the the, the fuselage like especially mm-hmm. in the rear end it's way it's 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 i like the size of my hero one mm-hmm. i would love to find another sazo hero um from what i've heard the the hero 5 has acrylic wings i would love uh, yeah that would be X-wing. amazing yeah i would love an x wing with acrylic wings i may have to one day hit up jason Eaton and say hey can i make one of your x wing you know with hero's wings cuz i know he's he's really deep dived into mm-hmm. I got too many projects already, so gotta stop. <laughs> gotta stop somewhere. And Chris Lawson, this is the 148th MPC tie. Interceptor. Oh, it's the interceptor. Okay. Yeah. Looks great, man. Nice. Oh, okay. So that's the that's the old MPC that's been re-released through round two. But I don't know if they've altered details or what. I'm not sure. This is the one he got off of my friend. Who had all those those kits? Uh, or no, they were Bandai kits, weren't they? Yeah, they were Bandai. Yeah, they're one seventy two. Yeah. When I first looked at this, I thought there was glass in the in the uh, in the viewer. Oh, there. The reflection oh that's there. what you meant. Okay. Yeah, that's what I meant because I saw then I saw the that it was the slots from the the, the opening on the top. top. And at first, I was like, "Wow, oh, glass in it!" Like, is because in Jedi they had two scales of the interceptor. They had smaller. Interceptors were they 148 or did you know? I'm not they, sure, but they they were scratch built as well. They were scratch built, yeah, because yeah. they wouldn't have had kits to have, unless they used a, a fuselage for them from from a kit from a for a Tie Fighter kit and then change the wings or scratch the wings. There's a picture that. of the the diecast models upside down, mm. and then mm-hmm. there's the scratched B wings that are smaller and the scratched Tie Interceptors that are smaller, isn't there? Okay. Yeah. This looks good. Really good. Thanks for showing us, Chris. You know, John, I remember you were talking. What did I? I asked you once if it was difficult to build a X1. And you're like, no, just just marking off those panels, you know, black. Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier just to like paint the wings black and then tape off the in the, inside the panels rather than the outside Mar- the Marvin, panels? Marvin said the same thing yesterday. Yeah. But, I would think that'd be much easier. But I kind of I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it makes two ways to skin a cat, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, I think it's personal preference, really. What were you saying, Jason? Yeah, but you also you also have a maybe not. You also have a chance of the black giving the 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 color maybe more of a grayish tone. Yeah, Chris did that. He painted. The only thing I would be worried about is like laying tape on this uneven surface, right? Yeah. And then the blue like spraying inside of it. So if you look, at, if you look at how the bomber um, has been painted, I think the tape butts up to the outside of the cool shade. Okay. Which oh, that's right. Hard, it, it which, doesn't. It doesn't hit that. No, which would be hard to do the other way around because you'd have to roll the masking tape over the edge. Does yeah. that make sense? It does, yeah. 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 When I saw this picture, I was thinking about that, what you had said about painting the wings. Mm. I mean, I just, I just take the model home in the evenings because that's something you can do even when the kids are running around. You can just still just take the, take the wings off. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's a laborious task, but it's something you can just keep doing. It doesn't spray, it doesn't smell, there's no spray. You can do it anywhere, a kitchen table, you know. I'm surprised you can. You, your kids are little. They be my kids used to jump all over me and wrestle when they were. When they were oh, little. they do that as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I would never be able to do this at home uh, if I well, had. I mean, so, I mean, yeah, it's been easy when they're in, they're in bed. I guess we find ways, all ways that we possibly can to do that. Like I took a whole bin filled with stuff just to work in a hotel room you know yeah. so well, i've got a buddy that um drives to work sites and on his lap so when he pulls up at the red lights on his lap is a tamia box upside down which he cleans figures and parts and then when the lights go green he drives off again <laughs> <laughs> oy, 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 that's a bad idea <laughs> yeah oh that's not a great idea no okay Michael James, this is something I really wanted to, to see and talk about. Wow. His inside to his crawler. 
looks exceptionally cool. This is this is one thing that I feel like mine doesn't accomplish is how messy it would be in Jawas, you know, living quarters. I I need to make mine messier. I know that. You also have ICD, Chris, perhaps. Uh, I really don't actually. I, I actually don't really. Um, normally, I guess, but like looking at this, I want to accomplish this, this level of messy, but there's, I feel like in mine, like I would just, the mess would cover up a lot of stuff, like the, the lower detail. half. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a, lot, a lot of things that I put a lot of work into. Um, but I I saw this. Uh, I didn't realize he was this far on the inside. I've seen some pictures of stuff they they you know, little little snippets of things that he's been working on. Like I saw this this piece down here, um, and I was a little shocked at how far along he's gotten on this. It's nice to see people do something different like this. I think it's really cool. Yeah, because yeah. quite often you know people when they want to replicate studio scales to make it exactly as it was. Yeah, as built by the by the crew, you know ILM and uh, exactly. Had to, yeah, a lot of creativity. Well, I think you can just go. To this town. is the same. This is the same same model as mine. Mm -hmm. Same 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 skeleton and everything. Same shell from Marvin. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and he, I don't remember how. I think he's pretty accurate on the outside. Um, but he did. He's doing what I'm doing is doing the inside too. Like, because even on the outside. Think, you, the non-hero side was never done right, so you'd, you'd you'd effectively do that your own way if you wanted to. Yeah, there's a couple spots on it. There's some like half of it was was the finished, like mm -hmm. the bottom front and the third I love that. Third, third half, third the bottom the back third was finished, but the middle and the top front was not. Mm. Um, it almost so, reminds me of like a Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> table of figures but uh, guys i'm gonna have to uh, take my leave now so um no way man yeah, yeah. sorry my, my son's got to go to an appointment and i've got i can't be left with um being locked in a room upstairs while children are trashing the house downstairs <laughs> <laughs> Chris, all right, gotta, man. Two men. okay all right well, so later on. i think i'm gonna show this speak soon john yeah, he even has like a hatch here popping up with a Jawa sticking out and welding something. Oh, that's that's cool. like a little screen on it. Too. That's really cool. So yeah. you know the scale of the Jawas he's got? They seem to be smaller than the Jawas that you've printed. Is that right? Yes. Or... Yes. Yeah, he, he went a little smaller. His scale is mm -hmm. a little smaller. Mm -hmm. It's probably more accurate. Yeah. In terms more of scale. accurate scale with, mm -hmm. with the, the size of the crawler. Um mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I didn't really think about scale too much until sure. I did the f lower half. And then, mm. and I kind of compared it to like what the tank, the height of the, the tank treads to get kind of close. His is definitely probably a little more true to scale. Um, like, but his is motorized. Like, he's got turning cranes and everything. Like, I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's really cool. It's oh, phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, really cool. And then, like, he used three D printed C Lab, also. Like, I, I, I did inside. I all, nothing was nothing was really. I could do casting. I could do three D printed. It didn't matter. Um, but outside was all styrene. And here's some more pictures of his. I think this is this is the inside. That he is, I the one thing I really do like, especially on his, is this little hallway. I, I don't know why. I just, I think it's really this picture right here. I, I think this looks so Star Wars to me that it's just, I don't know. He he has these lights that he 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 um uh, vac formed that are that are in. If you see the the part where the R2D2 and C3PO are sitting in the sand crawler mm -hmm. right above them. The lights are going. Um, these are these little block lights here. But this this little hallway I I, I really enjoy a lot. And this is that that panel that he 
uh, raised in sparks, more Jawas. And then uh, this is the top, I think, of, of, I don't know. I think this is like the upper level, like one of the flo the roofs of the floor mm -hmm. of uh, his levels. This is a lot more messy and, and a lot more Jawa looking than, you know, I like that. I, that, that came out really nice. Put a cloud, a cloud car cloud? in it. That's a cloud yeah. car. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. And then this is like a conveyor belt. I was thinking you about doing this as Easter well. Eggs, you? That's what you could do. You could just put loads of kind of little Easter eggs like that cloud car, you know, make, maybe yep. get some old Star Wars models and, 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 and yep. Uh, yep. create some junk out of them. I added some uh, detention detention oh, yeah, block cameras yeah. in there, yeah. little 3D printed ones. I love this. This is really this is inspirational. Yeah, Look at it's that. It's great to see this kind of creativity. It just, yeah. It's just a, a complete mess and it's perfect. Love it. Even the background lights behind the, the junk, you know, yeah. it really, it really gives you a, a, an environment of, of that. It's in the Jawas. Sandcrawler. Sorry guys. I'm looking while I'm, I'm flipping, trying to talk. Yeah, I wanted to show he put fiber optics in some of their, the back eyes. in some of their eyes. <laughs> and I think those are the ones that are up yeah, yeah. higher. And these are these are three D prints. Okay, I was wondering if they were the little Galoob uh, micro machines, or if they were. Oh yeah. Where are the pictures of the ones where the? There's a lot of pictures. Boy, he's done a lot of work on it, so it's kind of you almost want to document what you've done. <laughs> See, there's one with the eyes. Yeah, yeah, he did a fantastic job with the lighting. Yeah. You'd think since I'm an electrician, I would add more lights, but I, I didn't. <laughs> There's the, I like the, I really like the eyes. That was yeah. a good touch. Yeah. And the crane, it just, it just looks like a Jawa mess. And then this, this smelter back here, that yeah. light is really cool. Fantastic job, Michael. Yeah, it's brilliant. That sense of scale as well that he's achieved just by using everything, you know. The, the I know. Scale, Even that's that's look, difficult. Looking at the pictures that he, he had before, you wouldn't realize that it would be, be this small. No, no, that's what I'm saying. He's just, you know, it's that, that's that's not an easy task. No, he's gotten the scale very, very well. Mm. Excellent job, Michael. Thanks. You keep showing us, brother. I, I, I want to see you finish this as well. And let's just touch upon, I think there was like two more that I definitely wanted to touch upon. Uh, John's Death Star Tower. John, I see you're on here. Where did you get this from? What is this? What is this from? It's I've never seen this size one before. There's one that, there's one that comes with the, I don't know how big this one is, but there's one that comes with the Bandai A-Wing. Okay, maybe that's it. I, I don't know if it's that one, but uh, there is a, a tower that's reasonably small that comes with the Bandai. Yeah, Look, looking good. That. This Arturo along with the A wing. Oh, yeah. Yep, right yeah, there. there you yep, go. Yep, yep, yeah. Right there. That's, that's it. He's doing the A wing in Macquarie colors too. Awesome. Looks great. Oh, yeah, this would be. Hold on. I think I've seen a Macquarie Death Star tower that's. Painted like this? Am I am I correct on this, John? I know that there was one that had like red, big red squares on it. Oh, I wonder. Let us know if I'm wrong. And then I thought there was one. Oh yeah, the welding drawing from from Jerry. That's the other one I wanted to touch upon. Lee Ralph made a set of these. Yeah, and... no, I've seen I've seen Lee's there. Really cool. You see them in person? Uh, we saw them. I'm pretty sure that uh, when we went to Archive X, there was at least one of yeah, them. Yeah, he's got them yeah. there. Yeah, he yeah. actually sculpted. He was uh, Jerry was asking for the for the um, 
the uh, scout trooper helmet. Mm, that's um, right. That's the one. And it's a quarter scale scout trooper helmet you need for these. But um, yeah, John's built one as well, John Simmons, and we, I've seen that as his as well. Oh, you have seen that? Yeah. Okay. Really cool. Bandai. It's Bandai. That tower is Bandai. Yeah, it's the it's the it comes with the A. Yeah, yeah, comes with the A. Yep. I think that is all of them that I wanted to point out. Um, those were tools. Oh yeah, Carter was also doing this uh, background chip. Mm. People were couldn't quite make out what it is. I knew what it was. I was like, oh yeah, I have that on the. It's the twin pod with yeah. the two pods on the sides. Mm -hmm. Um. Somebody showed one of those recently, and it was a combination of one of the background chips with the pod, the twin pod, and it looked really good. I think Carter's doing the same basic thing. And I think we're good. We showed Lee. There's Lee's at Y-Wing. They're always beautiful to look at. Yeah, he's doing his own two PG oh. and uh, the smaller 148. He likes the 48 scale, the 148 scale ones. <laughs> His are great though, they're lovely. I've got one oh, of his and it's yeah, it's stunning. You do? You have <laughs> one? Yeah, the one okay. one I do, yeah. Yeah, he does amazing work. I love seeing his his work. And then Michael's James, now that he's now that he's well, he shouldn't be done with the sand crawler yet, but he's looking at doing a um, I was doing the um the dis escape the pod. dispatch pod. Mm -hmm. Escape pod, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I see the KFC bucket. <laughs> All right, I think that we could end the show there. Please, here's Carter's um, in primer. Yeah, yeah, in primer. Yeah. It looks so good in primer. It Black does. primer, gray primer. Everything looks good in primer. Yeah. Sometimes I think it looks better in primer than in in paints. Yeah, I think that was. I think those red panels. Uh, twin. Uh, John was saying. You seen the one with the red panels before? I think that. Oh no, I'm wrong. The the um, the Macquarie ones have baby like a baby blue uh, squares on them instead of red. So, all right. Well, I think that's a good place for us to stop. Um, let's see. And thanks, Parminder, for hanging out when those yeah, no two other those two other hosers bailed on us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh. You having a show today later with the Rogue One? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, two streams in one day. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever done two streams in one day. No. But it's a Friday, so I'll manage. Yeah. I got. I got to do some work. Actually, I, I thought I was gonna have to go to New York, but I, he wants me to do something quick. So. All right. Cool. I do got to run. And uh, fair enough, fun. Thanks. For, thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me, Parminder. Yeah, welcome, mate. Always good. The other guys left me Best hanging. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thing, guys. Uh, great show. Talk to you later.